Hey, ChatGPT, write me a raw panel TCP client that connects to 192.168.11.5 on port 99.73. Then initializes the connection by sending list to the server. This is the raw panel server on our blue pill over here. Then the server you connect to will be able to send you these type of commands. These are button presses. And the numbers 1 to 8 are the buttons pressed. Only act on the down presses. Then you can uh, experience also other commands. Please ignore them. We will use the down presses to change routes on a video hub. And when we press the numbers 1 to 8, it shall route input 1 to 8 to output 3 on the video hub. And therefore, you should also make a TCP connection to the web hub video hub found on this IP address and on this port. And when you connect, you will get this kind of state information from the video hub. All right. So from this information, please extract and keep in memory the inputs routed to output number three. And then when those values are changing, please update the color of the button. So whenever a given button is routed to output three, it's turned on. And when it's not, it's turned off. Use this code to turn it on. And then we give it this code. And then turning it up by setting the state zero. And finally, anytime we press the buttons, you shall send a command like this, video routing, la la where number seven represents output eight. And in our case, it should be output three. And as number two represents input three and so on. So this is an off by one situation. Let's send this to ChatGPT and see what comes out of it. And now ChatGPT is going to generate code like crazy for us. And we'll paste that in in a moment. This is uh, hopefully Go code. I hope so. Oh, it doesn't look like Go code. I am not happy. So we need to stop this. Stop, 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 stop immediately. Okay, it, it already finished. Anyway, I'll just edit my answer. Yes. And I need this to be Go code. But as you can see, if you like other programming languages, you would have a chance to do that. In this video, we will have ChatGPT generate this code and we'll use that in a moment. But first, I want to set you up or kind of introduce you to the setup we have here. This is a Riedel Smart Panel. This is about how to make this into a video routing device using the raw panel integration Skyro has built for Riedel Smart Panels and having ChatGPT render some code to make this all happen. Basically, what we did is to make Riedel Smart Panels accessible using a simple TCP protocol, which is called Raw Panel. And uh, it works on like this, that on the BluePill device, this little guy, uh, our BluePill server, and it could be any Skyro panel, by the way, we have an application running called XPanel Riedel Smart Panel. And it is uh, set up here. It has the IP address of the Riedel Smart Panel, the Enmos port running on it. It specifies the server port that is now available on it. There's a TCP server on the Blue Pill server now, which we are connecting to with our program that ChatGPT is writing. And um, this allows us to, to connect to the Smart Panel. We'll see that in a moment, how easy that is. The uh, um, Riedel Smart Panel itself has this UI. And inside of this, you need to have the Control Panel application enabled, which is a licensed application from. Uh, Riedel, and you also have to have some Enmos setup, uh, more or less looking like that. There you see the port that we are using for the Enmos setup, and that was also found in the configuration over here. So that was just a few details, but this is already running for us. So let's just quickly see how this works. If I um, use Netcat uh, Putty on Windows, uh, Telnet, basically, I can use this to connect not to the to, not to the Riedel Smart Panel, but to the Blue Pill on the port that we specified, namely this one. And if I do so and type in list, you uh, you initialize it for ASCII mode. And uh, you now see some standard data coming over, like the serial number of the panel and the type that we are connected to. So that's all good. Now, notice what happens. As I'm pressing these buttons, I am getting triggers sent over into my uh, console here. And um, that's actually a super great way to explore how raw panel protocol works with the Riedel Smart Panel, because obviously I can receive triggers very easily in this way. But um, if you want to do the opposite, send feedback into the panel itself. Uh, then what you want to do is to basically uh, run this application. And then I could, um, you, you can actually see that I am going to receive these triggers. Uh, in Raw Panel Explorer, this application can be downloaded from our GitHub repository. And if I pick the first one, and by the way, notice that we have both encoder, we have um, like sort of button presses on the lever keys, and uh, you can also do it the other way. And then you can turn the encoder and you get pulses sent over. Now, today we'll just work with the lever key, and that is the 
outer ring. If I if I pick that and I turn it on and I set the color to pink, for instance, now you see pink color in this one and I can change it to a different color. I can turn it off again and we will be using that actually in this uh, little demonstration. So um, I want to show you this code because this code basically turned the button off. But if I turn it on again and I show full state, then this is the full state that we're currently sending over to the button. I could also add in some text. So we could type in hello and it will basically put hello into the display as you can see on the panel. So if I send the full state, we will get the full state of this one sent over. I will show you that we can do this from the terminal by just um, uh, clearing out the panel. We'll just turn it off here and then clear out the text. And if I enter into my console over here, then I paste this one in and you'll see that I'm setting the call. I'm also setting display content. So hopefully we can have ChatGPT do the same in a moment. But let's uh, let's see how far did we get. OK, I got you introduced to what we're trying to do, but we also need the video hub in the game. All right. So on the, the, my video hub is on this IP address and on this port. So this is all according to the video hub documentation from Blackmagic Design. It has basically developer inf information about the video hub Ethernet protocol and that will tell you everything. So essentially, if you want to know what is happening in here, that's what you do. But when I press this button, you see we get all this initial data sent over and I also fed that into ChatGPT. So hopefully ChatGPT would be able to pass this for the information that I want. I'm not sure it will because this is freestyle. Now, um, if I want to change route, I should do something like output video routing. And now um, what I also want to do is to bring up the control here. So it is output number, let me see output number three that we are working on. It is currently on, on nine. So would that make sense? I know output number three, there's this off by one situation. So um, if you look at the video output routing, this is output number two, it is routed to input number eight, according to this, but that would be input number nine. So that is actually right. And to to make this routing, I should do something like this. And then I would type in um, my output is three. And then I would type in nine, that would give us number number 10. And one more line. And that's that's it. Okay, so we have the video hub TCP protocol also sort of figured out and we'll see if ChatGPT is clever enough to pick this one up. Okay, so let's um, see what code came out of this one. We'll copy this code, bring it over into our code editor. I have this repository here where I will create a new folder called routing, not rotting, but routing. Thank you. And then we right click on this one, create new file main.go and we paste in our code, save it, and then we enter into the folder routing, and then we write mo uh, go mod init routing to kind of initialize mod tidy, and then go run dot. And then it says undefined video hub connection. All right. Now, sometimes, and you know, actually, why not just ask ChatGPT to fix this? All right, I get this error, please fix. And then we'll definitely see, oh, I apologize for the oversight. <laughs> and um, I forgot to pass the video hub con connection to the update button colors function. Now, you know, sometimes you wonder, why didn't you figure that out before? Are you just lazy? And yes, ChatGPT is sometimes lazy. So if you look through this code, there might be places where it's basically saying, hey, figure this out yourself. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just too lazy to write out all these bytes to your screen. So uh, I rather like you to ask me again. It's like, hey, talk to me. Talk to me. I'm bored. OK, but I'll just fix this because sometimes that's all it takes. And now we actually. OK, let's try. Uh, so we don't know if this actually works um, before we see it over here. Uh, apparently it doesn't. OK, so. You know, it's it's not working yet. And of course, this exercise is not about making, sh you know, having ChatGPT give us the perfect code, but it is actually to get started on raw panel. So maybe we'll just look into the code and see what's going on. And um, it is uh, setting up, it has set up the server address, which is nice, the video hub address, that's nice. So now we will need some debugging be done here. First thing is it's connecting to the server, sending the list command over, and that's a good thing. And then it's connecting to the video hub and sending this one over as well. Okay, so far so good. It has this 
um, variable to keep track of the outputs and the button states. Uh, create a map to track button states on off. Yeah, we'll see if that is necessary. So then what it does at this point is it is scanning. And what is it scanning from the connection, which is our connection up to that one. Okay, so the video hub connection is not being dealt with. Ah, see, that's interesting. Because as we connect to this one, I would expect it to sort of read those states out. Let's just see what happens in this one. It is uh, splitting by the equal sign. It is looking for down, uh, which might be a good thing. What is state? State is part number one. And uh, if the command contains down, then it does stuff here and it sends button state, which then state zero, if on, then it's four. And then it tries to put this command together, which is, oh. No, 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 no. Ah, you know, it kind of it gets confused here. It is. Come on, chat I, I try to make this clear to you, but it somehow confuses and thinks that what it should do when we it receives these button presses, then it should set, you know, the color back to the panel. And that's really not what I want it to do. Ah, all right. So maybe I should just modify the first message here. So, OK, let's just edit. Um. So we have these coming in. We'll use the down presses to make routes on the video hub. Yes, therefore also make a connection to the video hub. All right. From this information, please extract and keep in memory the inputs that are routed, so and so. Okay. And use this code to turn, ah. See, that is the problem. It's kind of, I think we'll just skip this whole section where we are introducing it to this. Okay. We will use down presses to change routes on a video hub. When we press the buttons, therefore also make a TCP connection to this. And anytime we press a button, you shall send this a command like this, send it to the video hub. Okay, and then we try this out again. All right. So it will have to regenerate and we may experience the same problem as we had just a moment ago. Does this look better? Let's just check. So raw panel connection here, video hub connection here. And raw panel connection, it's initializing here, it's looking for inputs from our uh, and then it is creating this command and that actually doesn't look too bad. It's ah, except that it's using three. That is not, you know, that's the input number that we want to route to the output. So there's definitely something wrong right there, but it might actually work. So, you know, it, it might work with a little correction that we need to do. So let's just paste this in, see if it runs anyway, if it compiles, it does. Okay. So that's nice. And uh, it is useful to just check here if we have the um, by printing out, for instance, the input number that we are getting input number from the um, the panel button press. And then definitely over here, we we need this one to, to change around. This has to be output to and then we insert this placeholder here. And by the way, what is this number? Is it? Yeah, okay, it's input it's inserted as a string that that's okay. But it's kind of we actually need to subtract one. So this is not going to run anyway, but let's just try it anyway and see with the video hub if this would route something at least and it does. But as I promised you, it is not perfect because right now input number one is actually input number two. So we need to have ChatGPT change a little bit here. So we'll just tell it to do so. Yeah, we are lazy now. Hey, I need you. To fix this function for me so that you subtract one from the in from the input number before it's passed 
on into the mm -hmm, video hub commands. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry for the oversight. Certainly, you can subtract one. So now it is helping us doing this, and it is quite likely that it will work. So I'll just paste that in, run it again, and let's just see if the video hub is correctly routed. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, that worked. That worked. So at this point, I should really end the video because it's surely so that it won't continue as successfully as it has uh, so far from this point. But we'll still give it a chance and see if we can have uh, ChatGPT help us with uh, um, more uh, feedback. OK, so I spent some time writing this that when we connect to the video hub, we'll receive the state. And among the state, we'll find this section video routing output. and the line starting with two, that would be this line, will contain information about which input is routed to output three. So the value is off by one, so that a value of seven would really be input number eight. Okay, so and please start a go routine to continuously read the input from the video hub and updated local variable that has this information. Also, any time it changes output this value to the console. So we can track it. Okay, let's see what we get from ChatGPT now. Um, it wants us to add a little bit of, of variables here, which is fine with me. So let's just paste that in. And then it, it's uh, sweet enough to actually just add some uh, code here. This starts a go routine, which is like an asynchronous, um, uh, a concurrently running. Uh, scanning of the um, video hub and we should paste that in right here because then it will s get started and it will scan the um, scan for this input. So let's just do that. And um, so as I'm now changing, actually, it's it's pretty cool because I think we are actually seeing the output from the video hub here. And it is it is showing me number one is yeah, zero, one, two, three. So it's like off by one, but and it didn't figure that out correctly. But if we um, if we and now notice what happens down here in the console because as I'm changing the routing from oh, come on, it is actually not getting this information. Uh, well, I'm afraid you are information about video routing. I don't know if this is going to work, but we're just going to tell it that it's wrong and then we'll see what happens. So what is it saying? I see you want a flag to indicate when you're receiving information about video routing and reset it when you get another header. So uh, receiving video routing and when that is the case, then we are finding the line starting with two. And that looks actually a little bit better, even though my description was so bored for you know, lazy and everything else. Let's just paste this in and then see what happens. Now, I want this to be output. So anytime I see this, I want it to, you know, for my convenience, I'll put a few numbers here. So we see what is actually, what are we actually receiving? So receiving, okay, it probably said a variable up here, which we forgot to copy in. We just need to add that to and that is done by now. So let's run it again and then see what happens. OK, it, it does sort of look good. And then let's see what happens if I change up here. Yes, you can see it's actually now getting the numbers, but it's still like off by one here. Now, let's let's just get back to taking the code for turning on a button. So now we turn this button on, we make it red and if we use the full state here, then we get this information and then we paste that into ChatGPT. Okay, uh, you are doing great. Let's just encourage it. Okay, you turn on a input button for the state. Let's see what happens then. All right, it is quite oops. Okay. Nope. <laughs> what are we getting now? A crash, a regular crash. Okay, so what is it saying here? 
Uh, we just had a really um, tricky crash issue. I'm not sure you would easily find this yourself, but the thing was that I was trying to use the raw panel connection down here and we saw a crash right here. It, it would be crashing at this point. It, previously, it looked like this. This is a part of my sort of bug fixing because I could see from the output of it. So you see it's crashing in this line and I don't get it. Why? Okay, so I would then go up here because this is a global variable. So I'm like, hey, why is it crashing? But the thing is that here, Go is actually making that variable a local variable that works in the main function, but is not being set as the, the global one. So definitely a mistake on ChatGPT's side. So to make this work, I'll just remove that colon before the equal sign so that it is now assigned to the global variable instead. And I would have to make this error variable local here. Okay, so making this little change should actually make it work. So let's just check it out now. Let's see the video hub control over here. So we're actually seeing that colors are being moved around and it will unset the previously selected source and set the newly selected one. And what happens if we change over here? It is actually following along, but obviously we have again an, an off by one situation. I think we're just adding it here. And then hopefully it should work. Now, actually, let's just clear the panel out. Clear. All right. Is it clear? Clear, clear, clear. Yes. Clear LEDs, clear displays. Yes. All right. So let's just try to run this. Um, okay. So it's not picking up that one, but everything else is being picked up nicely. That is cool. And if I stop it and if I start it again, it should actually clear out those numbers as well. Final challenge that we'll do here is to see if we can have. Uh, it read out labels from the video hub as well. Okay, so I have written a little prompt here for ChatGPT. So um, maybe let's just go through it while it's generating code. I am basically telling it we need labels from the video hub. So it needs to look for this section and pass through these. And then when they receive those labels, it should send it over to the panel using a text string like this. And this is where this is button number and the text input is what should be substituted with the label it got from the video hub. So let's see uh, what it says um, and what it's trying to do for us right now. It seems like it wants us to update the inputs, uh, the section of variables again in the code. So, and it is probably just adding the input labels here. That makes sense kind of. So let's just see what else. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So it's kind of, mm, due to make separate functions. For, very likely we should just update this section over in the code here. Nice. And then the update label is that function was made down here. So we'll just do that. Probably it will send this over. Did it? Did it? Did it? Did it? Also, put that command in at the end. No, 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 no. <laughs> I still need to end it with this one. So somehow it just struggles so much with these line endings. Okay, so let's try to run this. And you see in the panel, it already put these in. It says input one shelf, blah, 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 blah. Those labels are communicated over to the smart panel. So mission completed. Almost complete video router for real smart panels using a blue pill as the translation bridge to the NMOS engine inside of the control panel application in the real smart panel so that you can use the easy, simple TCP commands that raw panel is. And uh, this is standard Skahoi universe. So this is also how our panels work. Now we just did this on a real smart panel, but it could be any of the panels that uh, Skahoi produces as well. And um, in this case, we did it with a Go application, almost written by ChatGPT, with a little bit of help from its friends, which is us. Hope this was inspiring. Please follow us on uh, social media and subscribe to this YouTube channel if you are hungry for more of these kind of videos that shows how you can integrate Skahoi equipment with your uh, broadcast ecosystems.